Hi. Now in the first part of this question then, we've got to work out the value of A. We've got to show that A in fact is 13. And we're told that PR is the diameter of the circle. Now to do this, what you've got to remember is that when you've got a diameter of a circle, then the angle subtended at the circumference, the angle PQR, this angle here, is always 90 degrees. It's always half the angle subtended at the centre. This is 180 degrees, so that must be 90 degrees. It's a basic circle theorem on angles. So, if we know that this is a right angle, what we've got to remember now is that the product of the two gradients, that is the gradient to PQ and the gradient to QR, must come to minus 1. So what I'm going to do is first of all work out the gradient of PQ in the usual way. So I just put this down here that the gradient of PQ, remember, is equal to the difference in the Y values over the difference in the X values. So I'll start with the Y value as being 10 minus the 2 here. And then that's all divided by the difference in the X value, so that's 9 minus the x value here at p, which is minus 3. So if you work that out, what you've got is 8 over 12. And 8 twelfths reduces down, if you divide it by top and bottom by 4, you're going to get 2 thirds. So we have a gradient then of pq as being 2 thirds. So we now know that this angle here should be 90 degrees. So that means that therefore the gradient of qr now remember it's a perpendicular gradient, so the product of the gradient should come to minus 1. So you should know that all you need to do is just turn this fraction upside down, that's 3 over 2, and reverse the sign. That's a plus, so we just put a minus. If you were to multiply these two gradients together, you would get minus 1. Now we know the gradient of QR, we can also get the gradient of QR by just looking at the difference in the Y values over the difference in the X values. So if I just put that also the gradient of QR equals, so if we do the difference in the Y values, 10 minus 4, all divided by the difference in the X values, 9 minus A. So what we've got now is that this equals 6 over 9 minus A. So, if I call this equation 1 and this equation 2, we've got two versions for the gradient of QR. So they must be equal. So what I can do is equate 1 with 2. So we just put this down here, equate 1 with 2. And so what do we have? Well, therefore, we have 6 over 9 minus A must equal minus 3 over 2. And so, if I multiply both sides by 2 and 9 minus a, then what I'm going to have is essentially 6 times 2, which is 12, and then I'm going to have minus 3 times 9 minus a. And then all I need to do now, we'll just come down here, all right, is to expand the bracket, looks like I forgot to put that equals in there, so I just put it in there. Okay, need to expand the bracket, so therefore we have 12 equals minus 3 times 9, which is minus 27, plus 3a. And then, obviously, if I add 27 to both sides, I get that 3a equals 39, and divide both sides by 3, and I end up with a equals 13, as we were expected to show. Alright, so that brings us to the end of the first part now of this question.